today on Be Something Wonderful, how to break the cycle of not manifesting your desire. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I was going uh, back and forth with one of you on the channel who said that, Tom, I've been visualizing and manifesting my desire, but then nothing happens. So then I stop, I put it aside. In other words, I let it go. And then, and, and then still nothing happens. So then I go back to doing something. I go back to, to, to visualizing again. I, I don't get it. Not, either way, it's not happening. I was wondering if you could unpack that. Well, guys, we're going to unpack this today and more. Here's what I want to say. And really, it was said best in, in, in Scripture. So I want to start there. But this is big. Remember, Jesus uh, quoted this, uh, this, this verse in Scripture, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Right? What you're doing is you're trying to live by bread alone. You're trying to manifest your desire without rising in consciousness. Hear this. Right? You can't manifest it from that lower state of consciousness. That's what's going on. Right? You're switching back and forth. So when you, when you say you're letting it go, you're still in that lower state of consciousness. When you're visualizing and, 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 and imagining it, you're not rising. You're not moving into that place where your desire is. This is big. right? Remember, bread in the Bible represents spiritual substance, right? So, so you, you have that spiritual substance within you. You're surrounded by it. It's flowing through you. You're made of it. But unless you utilize it, unless you call it forth, right, by rising, by claiming that state, then it can't happen. You, you are stuck or you're, or, you're, or you're dwelling in that dominant state of lower consciousness. Hear this, right? You're trying to live by bread alone. It's not enough. You've got to rise in consciousness, right? You've got to, you've got to call forth that spiritual substance. You've got to activate it, right? So without claiming, occupying, identifying with the state of consciousness or being that, uh, or being that, that creates it, right? Or being it, right? You've got to be it to create it. You've got to occupy it to create it. You've got to claim it to create it, right? This is big. You want to be given your desire versus allowing and receiving it. Hear this. Right? You're going, well, I, I've, I've tried to manifest it and then I let it go, but the, I, I still haven't got my desire. No, it, the, that higher, God hasn't given it to me. That's what it feels like, right? It's not about being given your desire. It's allowing and receiving it, right? It's essentially giving it to yourself, right? Because you are part of that higher consciousness. When you surrender to the higher power, all else is given to you. Right? It's surrendering to that higher power. It's not, it's not putting aside your desire because it's not manifesting. Hear this. There's a big difference. Right? Letting go is letting go and surrendering to that higher you, to, that, to, that, to God, right? to that, that, that inner being, right? to all that is. So it can then work to manifest your desires. It's not to, to manifest it. It's to know that you're made of it. You're, you surrender to it. While you and then you and then it's done, you're now in fulfillment. Then it must manifest in 3D. Let's unpack this a little bit more. Here's the key the key is it's not about what you can get from God or infinite spirit, but what God can manifest or create through you. Hear this, right? And, and even as you say it, like I put it aside, but then I've been visualizing and imagining it, and still nothing's happened. It hasn't come. It, it, it feels like you want to be given it. Instead, it needs to happen through you. You are the channel. You are the divine. It's going to happen through you. It's not about what you can get from God or infinite spirit, but what you can manifest or create through you, right? And the prodigal son, I've talked about the prodigal son several times now, but we're going to really hit it in a different way today because it's the perfect, the prodigal son is you, it's me, it's everybody in the human experience. Hear this, in the 3D experience, right? And this is what the prodigal son says when, remember, the prodigal son demanded his inheritance from, from the father, 
right? The father gave it to him, didn't talk him out of anything. Then he squandered it, blew it all as he reveled on the material 3D world and then runs out, runs out of substance, right? Runs out of spiritual substance, has nothing left. The 3D world has nothing to give him. Then he returns to God. He gets it. He returns to that higher state of consciousness. I will get up, rise, right? And go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in your sight. That's surrendering the 3D will. That's what the prodigal did. Finally figured out that it's not going to happen here in the 3D world. The 3D world has nothing for me, right? He squandered it all, realizing what he was looking for was all the time within him. Wow, that's big, right? Opening himself up to receiving the gifts of the Father, claiming his divine heritage. Inheritance or heritage. Inheritance, right? Moving from give me my desire to God manifesting it through you. Right? You've got to move from give me my desire to God manifesting it through you. That's what the product, the prodigal was give me my inheritance. I'm, I, I can go it on my own. Right? Remember, you have that spiritual substance. You were born with it. You're born divided. It's within you. So the prodigal son blew it all. And the 3D world couldn't help him. Right? It wasn't there. What he was looking for wasn't there. All the time it was within him. Right? So it's about shedding the old you and being reborn into the new you. Right? And this is big. Right? It's, it's, it's about repenting and forgiving yourself for missing the mark. Right? That's repenting. That's what the, 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 the prodigal son done. That's what they mean by repentance. Right? Remember, the, God doesn't see your sin. Right? And, and the father didn't see it here either. We'll get into that in a minute. But so there's nothing to condemn. There's nothing to forgive because God never condemns, right? Accepting and forgiving because you have already been forgiven. So it's about accepting that gift from God, forgiving yourself, right? And then rising in consciousness. Let's unpack this a little bit more because this is really brilliant. The parable of the prodigal son is your story. The story of banging it out in the 3D world until you remember and realize who you really are. You're trying to bang it out, trying to manifest something, trying to squeak something out from all that is, right? Give it to me. That's what you're saying with that, right? I know that's not what you mean. I know that, but that's what it feels like, right? Like the prodigal son, you're looking for your desires and fulfillment in the 3D world. Right? You can't get it there. You've got to rise in consciousness, right? And this is what the prodigal son says, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. Right? Demanding it from the Father. Right? Like the prodigal son, you want or desire something or are looking for something that's already within you. He already had it. It was already within him. It was already his. It was always his right? All that is mine is yours. That's what it says in the prodigal son. All that is mine is yours. Like the prodigal, right? You're saying, where is it? But you've got to rise in consciousness to claim it and occupy it. It's already within you, right? Like the prodigal, you are making demands on unconditional awareness or father without claiming or occupying the state. That's what we're getting at. Let's go a little deeper. The younger son, then it said in, in, in the prodigal, Luke 15, 13, the younger son went on a journey into a distant country, and there he squandered his estate with loose living, right? That's him. He separated himself from God in the internal good, right? That's the separation. That's when you're trying to bang it out in the 3D world, right? Lower state of consciousness, 3D focus. That's what he means by squandering. Right? You're squandering your substance. You're squandering your connection. Right? He wasted his spiritual substance, cutting himself off from the inexhaustible divine supply. Remember, you're connected to that inexhaustible divine supply. It's always flowing to you and through you, but it has to work through you. You can't just demand it without rising in consciousness and knowing it's already within you. Right? Like the prodigal, you look to the 3D world of conditions for your fulfillment and leave, and leave the Father. You give up everything for nothing. That's what the prodigal did. He gave up everything. Give me my inheritance. I want to go, see, I can do better in the 3D world. Right? I can do better. I can have everything I want. You give up everything for nothing. So anytime you're, you're, you, you feel that, that, you're, that you're focused on the 3D world, that this is where you want to be, that you can get what you want there, you give up everything. 
for nothing, right? Abandon your spiritual will. You abandon your spiritual will or your inner state for the things of the 3D world or the 3D will. Hear this. That's what the prodigal did, right? Let's unpack this a little bit more. So what does it say in Luke 15, 14 through 15? He began to be impoverished. So now he, now he blew his inheritance. He had nowhere to look. He began to feel poor. And he, he was cut off from spirit. He was cut off from divine supply. Well, you're not going to get it in the 3D world. No one can help you. And if they can, it's not enough. It, it's, it doesn't last. It's fleeting, right? So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him, and that, that citizen sent him into the fields to feed swine. Right? To feed the pigs. It can't, this is, Jesus is painting the picture here. He, look at the picture that Jesus is painting. That it's the low, he hit the low of the low. The prodigal now is feeding pigs and he can't even eat what the pigs are eating. No one would give it to him. Hear this, right? It's the worst case scenario, right? You're hitting rock bottom now, right? This is what the prodigal's doing. Seeking your desires of fulfillment in the effects or conditions of the 3D world. This demonstrates how far you fall in consciousness when you cut yourself off from source. Hear that. That's what the prodigal is showing you here. How far you can fall when you cut yourself off from that divine source, right? Seeking your desires in the effects or the conditions of the 3D world, right? You're not going to get them there. They come from within, right? And he would have, and here's what it says in Luke 15, 16, and he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating and no one was giving anything to him. This is big. Hear this in, in the prodigal son. No one was giving him anything. The 3D world has nothing for you, right? You can, no one can think and feel for you. No one can rise in consciousness for you. I know that you're saying, well, I, I'm trying to imagine or I'm trying to feel it. No one can think for you. No one can feel for you. No one can rise in consciousness for you. You, it's all within you to do. The 3D world can't help you. No one can claim you're good for you, but you. That's what the prodigal saying here. And he would be gladly filled his stomach in the pods that the swine were eating, but no one was giving anything to him. That's what it's talking about. You can't get it from the 3D world. You can't get it from the outer world. You can't get it from others. It has to come from within you. You need to think and feel your way to that higher state in consciousness. It's already within you. You were born divine. Wow, that's big. And so, but, and then it said in, in the prodigal, but when he came to his senses, now he comes to his senses, right? He can't even get the food that he's feeding the pigs. He comes to his senses and he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, spiritual substance, but I'm dying here with hunger. Hunger for what? Hunger for that spiritual substance. Hunger for that higher state. Hunger for the love of God, the love of his higher being, the love of himself, right? He's dying of hunger of that spiritual substance. He, he, and he's also without his desires. That's you without your desires, right? You're hunger now. You've got a hunger for your desires. Where are they, right? For that spiritual substance. You're in a state of need, want, and lack for your desires. Where are they? In that higher state. You've got to rise up. This is the moment, though, that the prodigal uh, woke up, right? The, the great awakening is here to your higher self, to the truth that you've never been separated from your father's house or that higher consciousness, right? Where your desires abide. You rise in your consciousness and return to that greater consciousness, right? He rose up and returned to the father, right? Get this, guys. This is big. So... Remember, when you turn toward God, God turns towards you. So when the, when the prodigal said, I, I, I'm going to rise up and go to the father, that's what we're talking about here. And remember, the father saw the prodigal while he was still a long way off and ran to him. Right? When, when you decide to rise in consciousness, you don't have to go it alone. Now your spiritual will and God and that hand of being is going to carry you. Right? You've got you've to just point your way. Right? God came running to him when he was, God never condemns. God doesn't see sin, right? He embraced him, right? And then the prodigal was telling the father about his sins, right? And saying, I've sinned against you. God, the father in the prodigal didn't even listen to it, had nothing to do with it, didn't even, didn't even acknowledge it, didn't answer the son when he talked about his sins. Why? Because God doesn't see your sins. You're already forgiven, right? Before they call, 
I will answer. Right? right? So, and while they're still speaking, I will hear. Right? Instead, God celebrates your return. Right? So that's all. So the, there's nothing to feel guilty about. There's nothing to regret. Just turn in that direction of your higher you, right? For the son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. That's what God, instead, God threw him a party, right? The father in the, sto- in the story of the prodigal that represents God, right? Or your all that is, or your higher self. Your higher self will throw you a party when you decide to come back. Right? The fattened calf, the sandals, the robe, the ring, it's all yours. Right? Why? Because you were dead and now you're back to life again. Right? You were lost and now you're found. Right? What's the message here? The message is you were born divine with everything, with free choice, in which state of consciousness you choose to abide. You were born with that. You were already born with everything you wanted. The prodigal already had it all. Right? The prodigal never had to leave the father, but he left to, and, and, and realized. That's when he came to the realization. He hit rock bottom and realized that it's already within him, that he's way better off at being one with the father. Right? So you were born divine with everything, but also with free choice to decide whether you want to stay in that higher state of consciousness or whether you want to explore the depths of the lower states. Right? In which state of consciousness do you choose to abide? Limited 3D world or with your higher self or with God, right? That's what we're talking about, guys. That's how to break the cycle of not manifesting what you want. This is big. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of Higher Consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. Hit us up on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, our website at TomKaren.com or BeSomethingWonderful.com, or write me anytime at info at BeSomethingWonderful.com. I always love to hear from you. Until next time, with great love, this is Tom. See you soon.